This is not my Lhasa op, so <laughs> this is my new wig for any of you who thought it was just like my cute little Yorkie poo sitting next to me or some little dog. Um, it's my new blonde wig, which I quite like, and I'm experimenting being blonde, which is pretty awesome. I feel, I don't know what I feel, maybe I just feel like a <laughs> Afghan hound. But as I think about being blonde, it made me think about what if I had gotten married as a blonde, which made me start thinking about going even deeper into the whole idea, like the wedding vows. Are any of you girls out there or older women who are getting married thought about what you're, the questions you're answering? I mean, there should be cliff notes to the wedding vows, or there should be you know, encyclopedias that parse the vows. Because let's talk about them for a minute. What about when they ask you, do you take this person for richer or for poorer? Now let's be honest, for just a sec, right? Who wants to be poorer than when they start their marriage? I mean, you've already practically gone bankrupt getting married because Lord knows they are just freakishly expensive. So um, do you want to feel more poor than you feel on your wedding day when all the bills come in and you have the cake, the $7,000 cake and the $5,000 picture, one picture? So um, think if it got worse than that. So you're saying, oh yeah, like I'd like to be poorer than I feel today. Or let's just say you're a trophy wife with your cute little 65-year-old husband who in 10 years will be 75. And in 20 years, regardless of your um, the surgeries that you get or the jewelry that you can buy or the Lamborghini out in the parking lot or the spa or the endless pedicures, he's going to be 85. Do you want to have sex with that 85-year-old or does the tennis pro look a lot better? So no one wants to be, you're not going to be poor, but I'm not sure you're going to be so happy. But what if you became, what if all of a sudden your rich guy got lost all his money? What if the hedge fund exploded and you were poor? And I don't know that. You might want to take that vow back. Although it wouldn't be bad if you got richer. But um, that, comes with a lot of that comes with a lot of strings. Like then your um, rich husband's off looking for other younger women. So that part of the, those part of the vows you might want to rethink. But now the next thing in sickness and in health, and I worry about that sickness part with all the talk about no more Medicare. You want your, you're both going to grow old, but do you want to be sick, bankrupt by being sick because there's no more Medicare? Something to think about, extrapolate into the future. Think about, think about no Medicare taking Medicare away from social programs. Because then in sickness and in health part, it will really rear its ugly head. And what about to honor and obey? Holy crap, girls, <laughs> who's gonna obey? What does that mean? I mean, is this like The Handmaid's Tale or 1984 or you know something out of, out of mid, the Middle Eastern Europe in the 13th century? No one's obeying. I'm not obeying. And I think that that's... Maybe you could like redact that. You know how everyone's redacting everything lately? <laughs> I'd like to see some of those running vowels redacted. So I think this June or July or November, whenever you're getting married, you need to... You know, and people write their own vows now. Rewrite them. Think about them. Write it down and get to know your vows. Peace.